Hi, this is Amir again and this is the sixth video in the series for Excel and in this video I'm going to talk about some of the things that come up when you have to take an exam and also some important functions um, so this video is really good for people who have the basic idea of Excel so if you are not comfortable with some of the concepts of Excel make sure you watch the previous videos and then come to this so let's get going the first thing I want to talk about is what's called a function called concatenate so what concatenate does is that it takes this word first name and last name and puts it together in the cell so I want to take my two words and merge it into one that's called concatenate I believe I'm pronouncing it right um, now in for the exam perspective I want to start the formula called concatenate so you need to know what category some of these functions are so it's easy to find them so under formulas you see a section called text and within the text you see a function called concatenate and when you point to it it will always explain to you what it does so I'm going to start the concatenate function now what is my text one my first name so I'm going to click on the cell where I have my first name I go to the text two. I click on my last name and I click OK and now I use the fill handle so it adds all the words together now if you wanted to put a space in the middle so I just go back to my C1 where I have my concatenate function and I'm going to click on the FX button when I hit FX it will launch the concatenate function because in that cell I have typed the concatenate function I'm going to remove the B1 and I'm just going to physically hit the space key and I'm going to go to text 3 and then click on the last name and I click OK now there is a space and I'm going to use the fill handle now all the names have a space in the middle so this is a function called concatenate now up here I have a problem that I want to take the words which are Amir comma last name John comma Doe and I want to split them into two different cells rather than being in one cell so it's the opposite of concatenate to do that I'm just going to highlight my information and I go to the data tab and within the data tab I see a button called text to column I click it and it starts a wizard now in the wizard I get to choose the option delimited now most of the time we will be using this which means that my names are separated with a comma colon some kind of a symbol or even a space so you need to choose that and you click next now in my case right now I'm not using the space I'm using a comma so I need to pick the comma as soon as you do that you see the split on the bottom you click next and finish it and it's done I'll do the same thing here I've used the space instead of a comma text to column delimited next instead of comma I'm gonna use space now if you had a symbol which is not listed here you have to click on other and then in there you have to put the symbol so if you had a slash you put the slash or whatever the symbol is and you see that it shows up on the bottom so you know you've done it right next and then finish so it's done the next I want to talk to you about something what's called a creating a custom list in Excel if you remember um, there is a thing called fill handle which if I type the word Monday go back in it use the fill handle it fills up the rest of the list like Tuesday Wednesday because Excel has a list for that now you can create your own list so I want to create a custom list with this ABCD included in it so what I have to do is I have to go to the option for adding the custom list now this is where because I'm using office 2010 uh, there is some differences from 2007 and 2010 most of the thing is the same so in 2010 I have this file button here 
In 2007, you'll see the round button which is called the Office button. So click on it and go to Options. In Excel 2007, you'll see a word called Excel Options around here on the bottom. It won't be in the same place, but in the same section here somewhere. Click it and it will open this window. You go to Advanced and we are looking for a word called Edit Custom List. I'm pretty sure in Excel 2007 you'll find it here. If you don't see it here, I think in 2007 you might even see it in the general section. So if you don't, come to Advanced and just scroll down and look for a word called Edit Custom List. You click it. And you see it, I already highlighted my thing. So it already shows the list here in the import button. I'm going to click add and I'm going to click import. And now it's just imported. I'm going to make sure I do this right. I'm just going to delete this guy. I'm going to do it again. I want to make sure because I had been practicing this earlier just to get it right. So I'm going to go to options, advanced. I never try to memorize any of my steps. I try to just understand it, so I always play around with it. So edit custom list. I want to add a list. You can even do it this way. I'm going to click here. In the import, I'm going to highlight. And I'm going to click the import button. And now you see, once you see the thing listed here, that means you've done it right. And I'm going to click OK. And click OK. Now, if I type A here, and I look for the fill handle and it will fill up the rest. So this is called custom list. The next thing I want to show you is what is called data validation. One of the aspects within data validation. What it does is, say for example, around in this highlighted section, say for example I wanted a drop down list where all of these names will have show up. So when I click a drop down button, it has a list with these names that I can pick from. So I'm going to highlight a section. My list is outside my section. I think you can even have it in there, but I prefer it to be outside. And I go to data validation and then click on data validation and allow. I'm going to choose the value list. And my source, I'm going to click in the line and I'm going to highlight my source and I'm going to click OK. Now whenever I click in this highlighted material I'll see the drop down list and I can pick whatever I want. Okay, So this is called data validation. Now remember you can always pause the videos and always rewind, go back or go forward if you need to. The next I want to show you is a small function, a simple function, but a good one called count if, which is a very regular question in exams. So I'm just going to click here. What count if does it, it looks in a given range, say for example this range, and it counts something. So if I say count how many times the word John has been repeated, and it will come back and tell me two, three, four. So up here. I need to start the count if function. So in the formulas, within the more functions, you see statistical. So it's in the stats criteria. And you are looking for a function called count if. Another way of starting this is by clicking the FX button. Because there is nothing in it, it will open this window. Now here you can actually type the name of the function or just the initial characters and you can hit go and it will try to find it for you. However, in the exam sometimes that feature is not working. So you need to know what category to go to. So you need to go to the statistical and look for count if and start it. Once you start it, now the first thing to tell it the range. My cursor is blinking in it. Make sure and just highlight the range. Criteria, say I'll type the word John and I click OK and it counts three times which is John, John and somewhere else John. 
so that's called count if function okay. the next thing I want to talk about is a, a simple feature within printing wherein say for example this is a section example I had used in the previous uh, videos um, and I go to print preview so this is my print preview button here if you remember how to add this if you don't remember I'll show you this is the button which is to customize the quick access toolbar you click it and then choose the print preview button so it will add this print preview button here and I'm gonna click it and if you look on the top in the print preview there's the word date position company and when I go to the page 2 I'm gonna click this arrow here for page 2 on the bottom it is listing it because I'd already done this exercise I'm gonna remove this first before I do this exercise let me go back I'm just gonna pause the video for a second So what I want to do is when I go to print preview here, page one has the title on the top called date position. When I go to page two, there is no title. So I want to add a title there. So how do you do that? That's a very common question. In 2007, you might have to hit the zoom button on the bottom. There's a minus and the plus sign so that you can see both the pages. So you'll be able to see that. So I'm going to go to the home button. I go to page layout and there is the option here called print titles and you see it says specify rows and columns to repeat on each printed page. So if you had like 10 pages to print and you wanted to make sure that your column headings were there on the top you have to use the print titles and it will do that for you automatically. So I click the print titles and it opens the page setup button I go to the rows to the repeat line I click in there and I'm gonna click on the row one and it puts it there now sometimes in the exam questions on the computer it will say repeat five rows then if that's the case you have to highlight all the five rows okay, in this case I only need the row one I just click it and I click OK now I'll go to print preview so there is my date position company I go to page two and it also has the date, position, company, resume. That's my titles for my information. Okay. So that is print titles. The next thing I want to show you is a function called VLOOKUP. So I'm going to come to this page. So if you want, you can type this if you wanted to practice this example. I just found this on the internet. I don't remember the websites I should have remembered this so I could give you the website so you can find it but if you go on the internet and just look for a V lookup example you can find it or you can just type this first name last name P code and political party what it is doing is this is like a list of people that are part of a political party and instead of typing the name they use the codes a 1 B and then on sheet 3 we have the codes, the party code and the name. So there is one is for green, two is for reform. So if you want it on sh another sheet, you can just type the word party code, name, and just type a few. You know, you can just take this A, 1, B, D, or just type A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, up to 7, and give whatever names you want in the name section, Democratic, Republican, whatever. Just type whatever you feel like. So what we look up does is, it will look for this word A in this range and when it finds the word A right here and it will put the word democratic in the political party section so it will vertically look for in that range and put that word here so it's called VLOOKUP so to start the VLOOKUP I go to formulas lookup and reference and start the VLOOKUP now whenever you start a function if you don't understand what all these things stands for just look on the bottom you see I'm my cursor is blinking in the first row and on the bottom it says lookup value 
is the value to be found in the first column of the table. So that is what is my lookup value is whatever is in this cell C2. So I click on that cell. We never type the word A's and things like that. We always use cell reference in Excel, not what's in the cell. Now the table array. Table array is what, where is the information that needs to be looked up. So in my case, the information is on sheet 3. And I'm going to just highlight all of my information. I'm going to highlight both the columns up to the bottom. I click on the third line. On the third line, it says column index number. That is, when you look at the sheet 3, there are two columns, party code and then the name of the party. Now, I want to get the information from the second column, which has the name of the party. So I need to type number 2 here. Because I don't want it to type A again. I want it to type what's next to the A in the next column. I go to the third line. Now here it's asking me for the range lookup. What it means is it's asking you to type either true or false. False means find a exact match. True means find a close match kind of a thing. So I'm just going to type the word false. And I click OK. And it puts the word democratic there. Look for the fill handle, copy it down. Now it finds the match for seven and then puts it there as whatever match it found it there. I'm just going to delete this and do it again, but in a different way. So I'm just going to come to my sheet three and I'm going to highlight all of this information. And right click and copy and I'm going to come to VLOOKUP and I'm just going to paste that information up here. Okay. So I want to show you how to do this VLOOKUP when your information is on the sh same sheet. There is just one thing to remember. I'm going to start the VLOOKUP from the LOOKUP and REFERENCE within formulas. My LOOKUP value is the same. My table array. Now my table array is in the same sheet. So I'm just going to come here and highlight it. Keep going to the bottom. Now the only thing to remember here is because the same range will be used for all of the rows. So I need to make this absolute. Uh, if you remember, we did absolute reference in one of the previous a video so you want to watch it you can go back and watch that video absolute reference means this is the range so to do that I can press the F4 key on the keyboard uh, or you can just type the information manually oh I just lost my range so I'm gonna go and highlight it again because I'm using this program um, the F4 key sometimes doesn't, doesn't word, work but on your computer you can so I'm just gonna put the dollar sign manually here Shift and 4, Shift and 4, so you have to put it around the cells and the columns. So dollar $H, dollar $9, dollar $I, dollar $53, but it could be whatever. My column index number will be 2 because I want to find the information from the second and the range value will be false. And I click OK and I use the fill handle. If you did not put the dollar symbols, did not make it absolute, some of your information will not show up because the range will start to change when you use the fill handle. So this is VLOOKUP. So the next thing I want to talk about is just the basic introduction to um, macros. What macros are? Macros are allow you to do multiple steps in one click. And macros can get very powerful. I haven't been bothered to look into it too much. But if you want to, just look for it. You'll find a lot of videos talking about macros. And if you Google it, you'll find a lot of examples. I just want to introduce to you enough information that you can get and pass the questions in the exams. So the macros are within view and there is the macro button all the way to the end so you need to first of all record a macro so I click here and I choose record macro um, some of my videos getting cut but you will see the word second button is record macro you click it 
and it comes up with this window and you can give it any name you can even give it a shortcut control E control F something that is not being used for some other function because if you remember control C is used for copying so you cannot use that which is shortcut so that you just press it and it will do it for you and you can even put a description here what this macro will do and you can say whether this macro is for this workbook or a personal macro workbook will try to remember for all of the Excel workbooks so I'll just put macro 1 I'll maybe try and see um, I'll put control J for the shortcut I'll click OK now I need to start doing something because the macro is recording so I'll just do something like I'll highlight this headings and in the home button I'll do uh, make it bold increase the font size make it red color uh, maybe put an underline so you know whatever else you want to do I'll go back to view now make sure to remember to stop it because it's still recording it and I'll stop the macro so that is creating a macro now say if I go to this V lookup and I'm gonna click here or maybe further up to my headings and I go to macro and I see view the macro and there is my macro macro one and it's already highlighted if there were more than one I could choose the one I want and I'm gonna hit run and now you see as soon as I hit run the heading became red in color font size bigger but then underline matching what I had done here so that's called the macros if I go to sheet 4 say for example I click here and I press control J which is the shortcut that I created now you see that heading all of these headings changed so that's the idea behind the macro but macros can get very powerful and you can go into the editing part which will open things in visual basics and things like that and you can start doing more things so macros are just not this it's very powerful <coughs> it allows you to do repetitive steps very fast in an efficient way so those are macro the last thing I want to touch upon is protecting your sheet you can password protect your sheet and you can limit what can be done on this sheet so say for example I go to I think it's within review and there is an option called protect sheet so if I click that protect sheet option and if I put a password I'm just gonna put one two three now I click OK and if I put the password again click OK now if I try to go to any cells and if I try to delete them it's going to come up with a message saying that you cannot do it. So before you make any changes now, you have to unprotect sheet and then type the password. Click OK. Now it is unprotected. Now if I go somewhere and hit delete, it works. So the way it works is that if, say for example, I'm going to highlight the section and right click on it and go to Format Cells and there's a section called protection whichever cell has that check mark locked once you protect your sheet all of that information cannot be touched so say if I remove the lock button from here and I click OK the rest of the information is locked only this information is unlocked now now if I do protect sheet I put a password and you see the check mark here select lock cell so that's where it's acting and you can go in and change a lot of things now if I try to delete this it doesn't work if I try to delete something here it works because they are not locked so that's the way these things work in terms of protecting sheet another way you can save a password is whenever if I wanted I could save as and in the save as window you see a button called tools and you see a general options so whenever you are saving a file you can do this in the general option you can put a password to open or password to modify so password to open would mean 
even before someone sees anything they'll have to pipe to password password to modify will mean people can see it but they cannot modify it so you can make things read only so thank you for watching um, hope this video was beneficial have a good day my first name so I'm gonna click on the cell where I have my first name I go to the text to I click on my last name and I click OK and now I use the fill handle so it adds all the words together now if you wanted to put a space in the middle so I just go back to my C1 where I have my concatenate function and I'm gonna click on the FX button when I hit FX, it will launch the concatenate function because in that cell I have typed the concatenate function. I'm going to remove the B1 and I'm just going to physically hit the space key. And I'm going to go to text 3 and then click on the last name. And I click OK. Now there is a space and I'm going to use the fill handle. Now all the names have a space in the middle. So this is a function called concatenate. Now up here I have a problem that I want to take the words which are Amir, comma, last name, John, comma, Doe, and I want to split them into two different cells rather than being in one cell. So it's the opposite of concatenate. To do that I'm just going to highlight my information and I go to the data tab and within the data tab Hi, this is Amir again, and this is the sixth video in the series for Excel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the things that come up when you have to take an exam, and also some important functions. Um, so this video is really good for people who have the basic idea of Excel. So if you are not comfortable with some of the concepts of Excel, make sure you watch the previous videos, and then come to this. So let's get going. The first thing I want to talk about is what's called a function called concatenate. So what concatenate does is that it takes this word first name and last name and puts it together in the cell. So I want to take my two words and merge it into one. That's called concatenate. I believe I'm pronouncing it right. Um, now, in, for the exam perspective, I want to start the formula called concatenate. So you need to know what category some of these functions are, so it's easy to find them. So under formulas, you see a section called text. And within the text, you see a function called concatenate. And when you point to it, it will always explain to you what it does. So I'm going to start the concatenate function. Now, what is my text one? My C A button called text to column. I click it and it starts a wizard. Now, in the wizard, I get to choose the option delimited. Now, most of the time, we will be using this, which means that my names are separated with a comma, colon, some kind of a symbol, or even a space. So, you need to choose that and you click next. Now, in my case, Right now, I'm not using the space, I'm using a comma. So I need to pick the comma. As soon as you do that, you see the split on the bottom. You click Next, and finish it. And it's done. I'll do the same thing here. 